So we're at the Temporary Studios. I just had Panera Bread sandwiches for the very first time. And walking in, even though we had discussed beforehand, even though Chris was asking, have an idea, we can prep it out. I wanted to make sure that I had no idea what was happening. And I just told them, just quickly looking at what we have here, that I think I have like around 10, 10 dishes. They want me to make it one at a time. I will try, but that's probably not gonna happen. Cheese, eggs. You're supposed to use guanciale, but I actually like pancetta or just fresh pork belly better. Chili crunch. What else? What did, what did you like about the true story of carbonara? I don't even know the story. I just know that if I called it carbonara, people would be up in arms. You fusion bastard. I heard an urban myth that carbonara was invented by the US military occupied in World War II, Germ uh, World War II Italy. That's not a, it's, it's not a lie. For real. You heard this? I heard it. Look it up. Somebody look it up. It's in the style of the coal, coal miner. Yeah, style of a coal miner, fine. But it took off in popularity wow. with the US military in World War II Italy because of that fucking fascist Mussolini. The reason why this dish, I say based on the true story of Carbonara, is not based on the true story of Carbonara. It's based on the possible true story that the GIs, US GIs in Italy helped popularize Carbonara. And for the uninitiated, what, what, is, what is Carbonara as you understand it? You cook pasta, some kind of uh, dried pasta spaghetti. You use eggs, preferably egg yolks. Uh, Parmesan, and you mix that ahead of time. That adds a lot of inexpensive luxury. I love yolks in food. It's the best way to add richness, creaminess, and really the feeling of luxury to a dish. It's something that Asians use quite a bit, particularly Koreans and soups. You want to make sure that you temper it quite, temper it right, because you don't want that egg Parmesan mixture to scramble with the noodles. And then you add some of the fat and also the crispy pork, usually guanciale. How did you come up with your version, Dave? I don't know. Literally, I came up with stuff because I just look at shit and I'm like, oh, I have this, I have that. You know, it's not something I would normally think. In some way, it's a, like a, similar to the Malaysian chili pan mi, which I'm a huge fan of as well. And that's something that our chili crunch can evoke, at least in my memory. When I think about Parmesan, all I'm thinking about is umami. Egg yolks are also naturally high in umami uh, glutamic acid. Even though the noodles that we make are Asian in flavor, I'm using the soy scallion noodle, those patterns to me are the same, so I'm just replacing, I'm not, while I'm not using the soy flavored seasoning packet, which is salty and tons of umami, I'm replacing that with salty and umami, which is Parmesan. So to me, this is the way I didn't say it, this carbonara that's basically, you know, based on a true story of carbonara that's spicy, it's more chili pan meat to me than Carbonara. Even though it looks like a carbonara, it tastes more chili pan meat to me. Basically, you're swapping out the very mild heat of black pepper for like real, real spice, right? No, I mean, this really doesn't taste like carbonara, which is why I'm not trying to swap out anything. You know, yes, when I made it, I was thinking like a carbonara, but when I taste carbonara, I taste a lot of dishes in general. It's not of that specific region. And yes, it is, but I was thinking when I eat a carbonara or I eat a cacio e pepe, it always tastes more like Asian to me. I know that sounds crazy. So I thought by adding chili, so the other thing is this, there's technically nothing really Asian in the ingredients that are in our chili crunch, but there are pasta dishes in Italy with quite a bit of chili. So the question I ask is, is it really Asian fusion? Am I adding anything really that's Asian? There's only flour and water in our noodles. If I'm not adding the soy sauce packet and I'm adding this, this doesn't have these are all ingredients that you see, okay, seaweed extract. You got me there. But for the most part, all, all, when I taste this, the reason why we like it so much, it, it's, a little me it's a little bit of all over the place. What's your portioning math? How many people you serve? Well, for my family, I do three. Two, one for me, one for my wife, and one that my kids split. But seeing that there's like a bunch of people here, 
I don't know why I chose four. I chose four. All right, fuck it. I'll go five. In culinary school, I had a prof uh, not a professor, instructor named uh, Chef Sixtel, and he would say delicious things like the uh, gelatin from a duck confit. He would say, don't, don't throw that away, that's liquid gold. These are liquid gold. So even if you're not gonna use them, you save them. Oh, blue eggs, wow. So even though I have five packets, I'm probably just gonna do uh, four eggs. Just yolks though, right? Just yolks. But it doesn't have to. I'll, I'll add a whole egg. Now I added five. That's probably gonna be enough for this dish. One. One giant tablespoon. You need to have some kind of standardized recipe for the instructions. It says to cook for three minutes. I tend to go longer because they're air dried, they're not deep fried. They're going to have a little bit more toothsomeness and I personally like them overcooked a little bit. Not really overcooked, I, I, I don't know. I'm not using, I'm not timing three minutes anyway. I'm just telling you it's probably more than three minutes. I'm adding some pasta water, the noodle water in now, because I'm trying to get this tempered. Because if I just added the noodles right off the bat, it would start to scramble. Need some more heat, there's a little bit. I'm gonna season with savory salt. If you don't have savory salt, the salt and pepper would be great too. So you'll find in my house when I use chili crunch, I almost always get to the bottom and there's no more oil on top. That's not a default, that's just how I like. I love using the oil to cook. That's why it's nice having a, a brand new jar because it's always got a nice topping of oil. I reserve some of the pancetta on the side because I'm, that's what I'm gonna help garnish with. Uh, but I have put some of the pancetta inside because I want it mixed in the noodles itself. It's very tasty. Very, very, very tasty. And that's why, I, I mean, it's probably the reason I don't have oil <laughs> too much is because I'm doing this. Spicy carbonara, but not really, with uh, soy scally noodles, Parmesan, uh, eggs, what else? Salt and pepper or savory salt and chili crunch. My wife thinks this tastes like Korean buldak. Um, dak means chicken, bul is like super, super spicy. All I can tell you is this is extremely delicious. It may seem unorthodox, but these are ingredients that I think not everybody have, but a lot of people might have in their fridge and uh, it's very, very yummy. I mean, this is basically like what they do on, those kids do on TikTok. This would be a mukbang, right? Yeah. Eat five noodles, one sitting. All right.